How's it going, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Shining Force 2. We have picked up the Achilles sword, and Dr. Captain K is tagging along with us. And we are attempting to regain the ancient caravan. However, standing in our way is a small horde of monsters and a mighty titan. We have to cut our way through. So cut through we shall. Now Taros is a challenge. He's big enough that his melee attack strikes from range. And the only weapon that can hurt him is the Achilles sword. Bodok runs in and stabs the arrow launcher to begin the battle. He deals 15 points of damage to it. Luke goes in to continue the assault. He swings his blade and deals another 15. Jameis moves up. Mefatu X. Blaze level one. And the flames consume the arrow launcher, finishing it off. Well done, Mefatu X. Soul Sower comes forth to attack Yarrick. Yarrick quickly dodged the attack. We'll let Yarrick have him. It's Kolari. Yarrick attacks the Soul Sower. He deals 7 damage. Those are probably the toughest monsters in this fight. Minus Taros, of course. Taros is kind of doesn't count. Incoming Gargoyle! He was hiding behind the column! Smacks Mafatsu X for 15 damage from the side. Nice sneak attack. Drachnon rushes in to assist. Then deals 22 damage to the gargoyle. Another one rushes in to attack Josh. Takes nine damage from his fierce fangs. Luke comes in to finish off the gargoyle that sneak attacks. And his blade comes down and slays the enemy. Mefatsu X throws a blaze level 2 on the gargoyle. The fire rains down and deals 10 points of damage. Mefatsu X earns 6 experience. And Bodak comes up to stab. He drives his knife into the gargoyle's eye, dealing 20 points of damage. And Bodok makes level 21! 2 HP, 2 attack, 1 defense, 1 agility. A great level up for Bodok. Jameis? Josh? 
not get too ahead of ourselves. Top off Mifatu X. H. Kalari dashes out to the front to engage the golem. And he deals 14 points of damage. Vermoyen goes forward. Yarik is attacked by the Soul Sower again. He takes one point of damage. The Master Mage smacks H. Kalari for his stick for one damage. H. Kalari counterattacks and deals eight damage back to the Master Mage. Yarik continues his battle with the Soul Sower. This time it's the Soul Sower's turn to quickly evade the attack. Another gargoyle rushes in to attack Josh, who takes another 10 points of damage. Gargoyle's second attack, Josh down to 14. Not a good position to be in. The golem throws a jab with his mighty fist of stone and deals 6 points of damage. X can't quite get into range. Jameis punches the gargoyle. And his full right deals 21 points of damage. Jameis' is second attack. And he deals another 21. His fist plows through its head, breaking its neck. Jameis earns 48 experience. Nuke. In range. H. Kalari attacks the Master Mage. 18 damage. That may lead to us taking a bit of hurt. Soul Sower attacks Yark. Yark is damaged by one point, and Yark is paralyzed. Time to start topping off Josh here. Josh recovers 15. Yark is no longer paralyzed. We're stunned. We better have some help coming. Dracnon attacks. Deals 15 damage to the Soul Sword. Soul Sword counterattacks. Dracnon takes 6 and is stunned. Dracnon is no longer stunned. It's always kind of nice when you take the stun via counterattack. May loses an arrow from her bow. She finds her mark, driving it straight between the eyes of the Master Mage. May is our next character to make level 21. One point in every stat. Very nice. The Golem takes another mighty jab at H. Kalari and takes a further seven points of damage.
just out of curiosity, Fatu hits the golem with his stick. Five damage. Our mage can beat up rocks with a stick. And Luke brings down his mighty sword. Soul Sower attacks both Drachnon for 10 points of damage. Drachnon is once again stunned. Jindal! Move forward at least a little bit. Now what the heck? Heal 2 to top off. Finish this thing off already. One dead soul soul. Yarek earns 38 experience. Drachnon is still stunned. Bodak comes forward to stab the golem. Jameis punches the arrow launcher. And he deals 22 damage. Fatu X. They're still gonna have that last soul soul to deal with. Josh can't quite get into the fight. Arrow launcher fires on Jameis. Who takes six points of damage. comes up and swings his axe at the golem. And with a mighty swing he deals 15 damage and cuts the sheer stone in half. Drachnon is no longer stunned. Bodok comes up to stab the arrow launcher. He deals 21 damage and slays him. It's almost lost time. That is not exactly what I wanted to see that soul sower doing. And the golem rushes up to punch each Kalari. Into 
takes a further 7 damage. H. Kalari kind of doing what he does best this episode, taking a pummeling and still beating it up. Luke's attack! The sword brings 12 points of damage to the bullet. Jameis attacks! The Black Monk takes 24 points of damage. And Jameis makes level 21. 1 HP to attack, 1 defense, 1 agility. The Fatu X swings a stick, deals 4 points of damage to the bull. That was not really where I wanted that soul silver to go. H. Kalari drives his lance forward, and he pierces straight through the golem for 11 damage, finishing him. Casts Blade level 2. Jameis takes 9 points of damage. And the Black Monk heals himself. And deals 15 points of damage of healing to himself. Bodok comes forward to stab the Master Mage. Deals 21 damage. Sorry about that, I just smacked the mic on accident. Jameis drives his fist forward again. And deals 26 damage, slaying the black. The Soul Sower rushes up to attack Jameis. Deals 10 damage. Jameis is in trouble. Vermoyne attacks the Master Mage. And Gentle throws a heal to Jameis. comes over to stab the Soul Sower. Soul Sower takes 13. Jameis attacks. And he finishes him off. Time for Josh and Jindal to step to the plate. Josh to deal the damage, and Jindal to make sure he doesn't die. Here we go. 
Josh attacks Taros and deals 11 points of damage with the Achilles sword. Taro springs down his blade and deals 13 points of damage to Josh. Taros attacks again. Josh takes 16 damage this time. Jendal throws a heal level 2 to Josh. I guess we're going to have to let the others be target practice, even though we can't do any damage with them. Tauros is not damaged. Josh once again swings the Achilles sword. Crit! Taros takes 14 that time. We're getting closer. We have to give him targets. May attacks. Taros is not damaged. Oh boy, he's still going after Josh. Josh takes another 13. Drachnon attacks. Not damaged. Yeah, he's fixed on Josh. One. Ooh, Josh down to one. Time to pull him out. Has what here? Gendel throws another heal level 2. Beach Kalari attacks. Taros is not there. Taros counterattacks and Beach Kalari takes 10 from the crib. And Josh falls back. Moyne uses his healing drop. And Josh is back to full life. Maze attack. are going to go down, but so be it. Drakon sits on his head. Taros finishes off H. Kalari. And now he attacks Drakon.
Josh goes back on the offensive. 11 more damage. Yark's going to fall back. He goes after Draconon again. Draconon is down. May fires. Her arrow merely plinks off the plating. Oh boy. Taros used Taros Sword. Actually, I kind of prefer that, but only 13 damage. Send Bodok in to be a target. Attacks May. He brings his sword down and May falls. 24 damage. Josh attacks. Further 11, and Taros is down to 2 HP. Gendel throws a heal too to top off Josh. Gendel is the next to make level 21. HP, MP, attack, and defense and agility all increased by one. Yark is going to stay put. Nope, here comes the bolt again. Taros used Taros Lord. Josh takes 16. Gimbal takes 14. Bodok takes 16. Josh delivers the final blow. Taros is damaged by 11 and defeated. And Josh makes level 21. 2 HP, 1 MP, 1 attack, 1 defense, 1 agility. A nice little level up for Josh. Josh, you're much stronger than I thought. So small. I'll just try to get inside. Oh, he's gone. I hope he comes back. Did Captain K lie to us? I never lie. The ancients were. How should I say this? Great! No wonder the caravan is so small. It carries miniaturized people and items. I can drive this excellent vehicle. May I go with you as a driver? Captain K, the historian, tags along with the force. You're kidding, right? Well, at least we can bring a lot of soldiers with us. But soldiers in the caravan cannot enter battle because they've been miniaturized. We'll just have to see. <clears throat> I don't like this guy. I wonder what adventures we'll find with this caravan. Eh, 
Anyway, let's get that chest. Healing water. That would have been useful during the battle, but, well, you know, it is what it is. So we now have the caravan. Where we can change members. We can deposit items. We can move items around. And we can throw stuff away. But this is as good of a place as any to go ahead and wrap this episode up. As always, I would like to thank everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. What the? We found dwarves! We came from Grands to look for Mithril. One of us went to look for the fairy. I hope he's alright. I'm so cold. Recent earthquakes have buried the tunnel. My friend is sick now, and we can't dig out the tunnel without him. Well, with that random encounter with the dwarves, now we'll go ahead and wrap this up. As always, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, favorite, throw any feedback you may have in the comments below as I always look forward to hearing from you. And we will see you again next time on another new episode of Let's Play Shining Force Team. Farewell.